Hello everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today, we're going to be working on a 2021 Ford F-450. We're going to be taking a look at, and I'll be walking you through how to install the Airlift Wireless One onboard air compressor system. Adding a compressor, especially a wireless one, is going to be a great upgrade for your airbag system. Basically, we're going to be able to air that up from inside of our vehicle with our remote or the app on our phone. If we need to hook up to our trailer, we can air our bags up to the preset. From the inside, let's say it's raining, we don't have to get out and get all wet, pushing our air line onto our air fittings. So it's going to make life a lot easier. We can simply air up with the push of a button. Our wireless remote is pretty cool. It has this nice clip on here so that you can clip it onto your visor or anything like that, just like a garage door opener. So whenever you're ready, you can grab it and air it up from inside or outside. Now if you do want to change your settings, so right now we're at our minimum, when you can see that light up, it has a nice backlit setting. So it's at 5 PSI. Let's say we want to bump that up to 9. You'll hear that compressor kick on. Then we can just set our lowest preset setting to 9. You see preset 1 saved, and now it's going to air up to 9 PSI. And if you did want to download the app, the interface of it looks just like the remote. It's going to be super easy to use, and you just pair that to your module whenever you pull the fuse or reconnect the fuse. And this is what our system is going to look like installed. We're going to have our manifold mounted here on the outside of our body. This isn't going to vibrate and make any noise, so this is a good spot to put it. And then our compressor is actually going to be mounted to our bed right up here. Now this does vibrate and create a little noise, so typically I don't like to mount it to the cab. Now this can be mounted in any orientation, whereas our manifold cannot be mounted upside down. So that would be our airlift logo facing the ground. And we do have our single output here for our air. This is going to come in handy if let's say your remote dies or your phone battery is dead. and There's no way to air everything up. Simply just put some air in there just like you would without the compressor and you'll be ready to roll. All in all, this kit is pretty cool. Everything's going to be included to get it installed, so you're not going to have to hunt down any extra parts. I highly recommend installing this when you do your bags, because more than likely, you're going to want this in a, year, in a year or two anyways, so when you're already under there, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. Now, if you did want to come back and install it later, just make sure when you do your bags, you just leave some extra airline tubing, just so you have some extra to work with. Now, all in all, you just have to drill into your frame. There's no welding or anything like that. The hardest part is going to be running our wiring. With that being said, let's get it installed together now. To start our installation, we need to find a good spot to mount our manifold and our compressor. This is going to be the best spot to mount our manifold. It's going to be right by our cab mount here on our side. We just want to find a spot where none of our holes are interfering with our factory holes. We can grab our longer self-tapping screws and get that started. We've got two on the bottom and one on the top. As you can see, it's not going anywhere. And then before we mount up our compressor, it needs to be at least six inches from our exhaust. In this case it is, so we have perfect clearance for everything. We now need to ground our black wire. Typically we could mount that under our self tappers for our compressor, but since this is an aluminum bed, we're going to need to go to this steel right here. So you will need to pick up another self tapper. We'll just grab that. Then self tap that into that cross brace. We now want to grab our wiring harness. We're going to take this and plug it into our manifold. And once that's plugged in, we're going to push down on this red tab to lock it into position. Push that tab down to lock it, and it's nice and secure. Now we want to take our red wire with the white stripe. We're going to route that up and over our frame rail. With that ran over, we can come back and zip tie that to our factory wiring and we'll snip off the spade connector from our compressor. We can grab our wire strippers. We'll strip back this wire and the red wire that we ran over. And we can grab one of our yellow heat shrink butt connectors provided. And our other end is going to go to that wire that we ran from our manifold. We can then come back and heat shrink this down. I added some electrical tape to our butt connector to help ensure a good connection. And we're just going to add some wire loom. 
Our kit didn't come with any wire loom, but you can find some here at E-Trailer if you desire to keep that wire protected. We're now going to run our three wires, being our pink, our black, and our red, up to our engine compartment to make our connection to our battery. We're just going to follow our frame rail and zip tie it to our factory wiring along the way. You want to make sure to stay out of the way of anything hot or moving. We now want to pop our hood. With our wires ran along our frame rail, we're ready to pull them up to our battery, which is located right here. We're going to grab ourselves an airline tube. I suggest not using one that comes in your kit. Maybe you'd use a coat hanger or a string or anything like that that you have laying around at home. That's going to help you pull those wires up to your battery. Now it is pretty tight right here, so we're going to go down the end of the firewall right back here. We'll grab our airline tube at the bottom, tape our wires to it, and pull it up. And our airline tube comes out right here in our wheel well. We're going to pull that up over our strut tower just inside of our wheel well liner and we'll get it pulled up there. We have our wires pulled up. They come out right beside our battery here. So it's going to be nice and tight. We're not going to have to worry about these jumping around and possibly getting on our exhaust. We want to cut back all of our electrical tape holding our wires together. Our red wire is going to go right to the positive terminal on our battery. Our black wire is going to go to the negative. If you choose to use an ignition source, you'd be using your pink wire. Now in our case, our customer isn't using it, so I'm just going to loop it up and zip tie it back here. That way we can install it later if he so desires. We want to measure out our black wire. We're just going to cut that right here. And toss our excess to the side. We'll strip back the end. Might strip it back a little bit more and just double it over to ensure a good connection. Then we can grab one of our ring terminals provided. We're just going to crimp that on. We'll just set this off to the side for now. We're now ready to get our red wire. We are going to be adding a fuse holder to this. So we're just going to cut it off here. Strip that back. We'll add one of our provided heat shrink butt connectors. We can now grab our fuse holder. Our fuse holder is going to look like this. You just want to cut it near the middle. We'll strip back both ends. One end is going to go into that butt connector, and the other end is going to get a ring terminal. Just grab a 10 millimeter socket. Move these nuts. We'll add our ring terminals. We're going to wait to add our fuse because we still have to take care of all of our airlines. We'll reinstall our cover. We'll repeat that same process for our negative terminal. We now want to grab our supplied airline tubing. We're going to take our airline cutters. You can find some here at eTrailer.com. If you don't have any, we highly recommend these over a pocket knife. That way you get a really clean edge. We just want to snip off that end. Then we're going to rub off the burrs. Now coming up to our manifold, we're going to have two air fittings. We're going to have one here on the bottom and one on the side. We want to take this line, push it into the side with our wiring. You'll just push that in until you feel it click. I always like to give it a little tug and make sure it's nice and secure. Now we're actually going to run this up and over our frame rail over to our compressor. Now we don't want to make this loop too tight because we want to make sure that that air flows nicely. So we'll cut it right about here using our airline cutters. Again, you just want to rub off those burrs, reach up and over, and just push that onto that fitting. It is going to be kind of hard to push this onto that fitting. In our case, we already have our airbags installed. This was a dual path setup, so we have our two lines running to the back. We're just going to come right up to this line here with our airline cutters. We'll just snip that. We want to deburr both of those sides. Then we can grab our provided T fitting, push that on right there, push that on right there. Now we can grab our new airline and run it up this way. This is going to give us a really good spot to hide that airline tube to keep it out of the way of anything hot or moving. We want to take our new airline, we'll push that into that T fitting. That black airline is going to come out of our T fitting, run through our gooseneck adapter, then through this hole in our hitch. And I added some protective coating to it. Runs out this way on the outside of our frame rail. 
tucked it into our wheel well liner and then back through the frame rail and up over our strut mount. Then I took our airbag airline, ran it through that strut mount, making sure to keep it out of the way and up there to the frame rail where we can make our T connection. There's gonna be a good spot to zip tie our T fitting down right here. We just wanna take our red airline, we'll clip that. We'll clip our black airline about the same length. We'll deburr that. We can grab our T-fitting, push that onto our red airline, we'll push it onto our black airline, just like so. We can run that other airline up to our manifold. Push that into our T-fitting, make sure it's not going anywhere. We're just going to run this along our frame rail, zip tying it to our factory wiring. And we can take this and push it through our frame rail have it come out on the other side, then we can meet our manifold. We'll snip off a little bit of our excess. We can deburr that and push that into the bottom fitting, just like so. Now we can zip tie this line up into our other lines. You can now go ahead and clean up your excess airline to your liking, then we can lower it down and put our fuse in. Push that in. Now we can grab our remote, we're going to pull out our paper, we're going to press one of our buttons to wake it up, and it should go into a pairing mode, so we'll pair it to that first one that popped up. Our pairing successful, and you can hear that pump kick on, it's going to go to that preset 15 pounds. I'm actually going to bump that up to 20 maybe even 25, that way we can go back underneath and test all of our lines. Now I'm gonna grab some soapy water, just spray down all of our fittings. We're gonna look for fast forming bubbles. Slow forming bubbles are okay, but we're looking for those really fast growing ones. So we're gonna move up and spray down the rest of our fittings. With there being no leaks in our system, we're good to go. And that's gonna do it for our look at and our installation of Airlift's Wireless One onboard air compressor system for our 2021 Ford F450.